The IBD breakout index has outperformed the S&P 500 in the past 10 years by a big margin. IBD, of course, stands for Investor's Business Daily, which was created by William O'Neill, who himself had a high growth focus and can be represented by the following quote. The whole secret to winning big in the stock market is not to be right all the time, but to lose the least amount possible when you're wrong. So today, we'll be talking about William O'Neill, the creator of the Canslim method and founder of IBD. Another one of William's quotes is the following. Remember, keep it simple. Investing is hard enough. Stick to the basic rules of Can Slim and don't complicate it by getting super tricky. So William is actually one of the greatest stock traders of our time. He achieved a return of over 5,000% over a 25 year period. And he actually made the majority of his net worth in this way. He actually founded his own brokerage firm called William O'Neill and Co in 1963. And then later on went to fund the business newspaper investors business daily in 1984 and he is well known for being the creator of the Can Slim investment strategy which we will be talking about in the following slides. So we'll be talking about some of William O'Neill's strengths as an investor. The main one is that he focuses on bullish investing and what is this? This consists of investing in only companies that are growing at a sustainable rate and this the only problem that it has is that any slowing in the growth trajectory or even in the market may result in the stock being very severely punished. So for his investing style, you need to have a high risk tolerance. Then he was a lot into timing. His main thesis was to try and get into high growth stocks before any major institutions could start buying them so that then he was already in there when they started to push the price up with their consistent buys. He would have a big focus on fundamentals, especially in revenue growth, margins, and free cash flow growth, as he would focus in high growth companies which follow this can slim method, which we will be discussing in the following slide. He then also applied some of his technical knowledge, as he would invest in companies with high momentum, and he would invest with a short-term view, in order to benefit from short-term fluctuations. So this is the all-time famous can slim method which William created, and it has a 7-part strategy. Of course, each letter stands for one of the conditions that the company must have for you to include it in your portfolio. And the first one, the C, talks about the current earnings, where the stock's revenue and earnings per share should be increasing quarter after over quarter. Then the same, the second letter is A, so annual growth. Earnings, of course, should be increasing for year over year. Then new offerings. The companies he's investing in should provide new products or bringing new management to act as short-term catalysts for the stock price to rise. Then he focused on supply and demand, where there should be more demand than supply for both the product of the company and the stock of the company. Then he would choose only leaders in the industry, although he was investing in them for very short term periods, he would also make a very big point of investing in the leader of the industry, as he debated that the principal reason for stock movements in the stock market was due to the market the stock was in. However, the market leaders would always rally further than the other companies in the market. Then institutions, this stock he's investing in should have a high institutional interest and he wants to get in the stock before institutions start to buy the stock. He would search for stocks that had one or two very big and recognizable institutions and then invest in it and wait for the other institutions to join the buying process for the stock. And finally, market direction. The stock should have an overall positive market trend direction and there should be a bull run in the market for this strategy to grow at its perfection. Now there are some advantages and disadvantages to can slim investing and the main point for this is that you should have high risk tolerance if you want to engage in this type of investing. Having said that, this type of investing is not for me as I would not be able to sleep at night with short term trades and being so heavily focused on catalysts. However, this method is really solid as it provides a clear wish list for acquiring stocks. Online there is a list of 23 points that he made for every single stock before actually purchasing it and this can serve as a wish list and can provide a lot of guidance for investors that want to have that kind of approach towards investing. However, this method works best when you're in a bull run, as growth slumps can cause big sell-offs. And what does this mean? Well, you're investing in high growth 
companies. So any kind of disappointment or not meeting up to the standards of the market would cause for the stock to be severely punished. Now out of the list of 23 trading rules that William O'Neill had, I have highlighted the 8 most important ones or the ones that I thought were the most important for him. The first one being that the company should have a 3 year earnings per share growth average of 25% or higher. Then the company should have an annual cash flow growth of 20% or more and he would only buy companies with a return on equity of 17% of more. Of course, he has stated that the golden number is usually between 25% and 50%. Then, he would also search for companies that were the number one in its sector in terms of revenue growth, in terms of earnings growth, in terms of return on equity, in terms of margins, and much more. Then, he would also buy stocks only when they were about to break out of resistances. So this is another one of the technical points that were attributed to his investing. He would cut every single loss when it is 7% below purchase price. He did not believe in averaging down, he believed in only averaging up. As if the stock price has moved 10% down, you shouldn't average down, you should just sell the stock and move into your next position. And finally, he believed in obtaining those stocks which had best in class institutional ownership and then wait for the rest of institutions to buy the stock once you were already in. And now some of the key principles for his success were sixfold. He believed the main point here was the preservation of capital. You should prioritize minimizing losses through, for example, setting stop losses to protect your investment capital. Then you should, of course, try to optimize your position sizing by investing more substantial amounts in trades or investments that had higher potential and reduce the allocation for those that had higher risk. Then you should set stop losses as they are the best way to preserve your capital and a stop loss order is basically a predetermined price at which you wish to sell your, your stock if it ever falls down to there. Diversification, he believed that you should diversify across different sectors and industries as he believed that they played a big part in the majority of the returns that came from holding stocks. However, he believes that you shouldn't overdo this and that your portfolio should be concentrated just having stocks from different sectors. Then you should always be thinking about the risk to reward ratio and you should have a clear target for your profit and ensure that it justifies the amount of risk that you are taking. And finally, you should be continuously monitoring your positions. Why? Well, because you must be ready to adjust your stop loss orders or take profits whenever the market conditions change. So thank you for watching. As always, this has been the Cashflow Compounder. Join the free Patreon for extra content and there is a link in bio for a free stock if you join Trade Republic or Trading212.